Hi, Dr. Simon Freilich here with the Clinical Neurophysiology Channel. In this video, we're going to be talking about how we measure sleep, in particular polysomnography, which I talked about in the last video, but I thought I would go into a little bit more depth in this one. So this is me back in 2005 when I started my journey into sleep medicine, and you can see me uh, wearing the uh, Somno, uh, po Somno Screen PSG system um, over here. It wasn't quite how we use it in the study eventually, but um, I just really wanted to take you from top to toe of what it measured and you know, the general type of things that we can measure using polysomnography. I was hugely delighted that this work eventually uh, made its way into a published paper um, in 2010. Um, it just gives you some marker actually of just how long it takes to get anything published in medicine which is a real achilles heel of how things are but uh you know with the great and good of sleep and ventilation medicine over here um, and autonomics um it's just a really wonderful experience and so let's just sort of dive in now in terms of what we measure measurement is really really important because you can only find what you are recording and the quality of what you're recording, the relevance of what you're recording is, is extremely pertinent to anything in science and to answering questions. So in sleep, there are different things that we can measure, different types of systems that we can use. And this is a graph of research publications as found on PubMed um, for different modalities of how we measure sleep. So we've got polysomnography, actigraphy, and sleep tracking wearables. And I'm gonna talk about actigraphy and sleep tracking wearables in the next video. Um, but you can see over here really that from the uh, early 1950s, polysomnography really, really took off. Um, and it was limited really very much to very specialized laboratories in its earlier stages. Um, and then as computing became more widely available, um, different types of portable sensors became more available. Um, there was a real explosion, and this is really the gold standard as far as we uh, treat it in terms of measuring sleep, and that's why of all these different modalities, that is by far and away uh, the most popular type, as it were, um, for measuring sleep and research uh, related into sleep. And you can see as well the drop off over here, uh, 2020, uh, 2021, in terms of uh, you know, COVID and the impact on publications. So uh, polysomnography, we've mentioned it's important to capture the relevant information and because sleep medicine touches upon so many different types of systems, it's ideal to actually try and capture all of these different systems, all the information coming from all of them. And so um, it's, that's why it's really the, the gold standard because it has so much information within, you can correlate different things um, against sleep. So if we broadly think about sleep issues, there are different ways of categorizing it, but we can think about um, issues relating to the timing of sleep. That might be uh, the circadian rhythm, whether people go to sleep early, go to sleep late, the amount of sleep people have. We can think about the quality of the sleep that people have and also the behaviors people exhibit during sleep as well. So all of these things are separate, but very much interlinked in different ways. And it's really important that when we think about uh, what we're measuring, we try and target um, the modality of testing to you know, what is required. So the relevant biological systems we may consider, we've got certainly the brain waves, that's the, the principal thing really when we're thinking about sleep, uh, but also, and this is exceptionally important, is the respiratory system, uh, particularly for those with sleep disordered breathing, cardiovascular um, activity as well, and movements, uh, particularly for those who may have something like a REM behavior disorder or restless leg syndrome. Now, the equipment that we use will vary upon the setting. Now, most sleep uh, research probably occurs in sleep laboratories, but clinical neurophysiologists uh, such as myself are very interested in people's brain waves. We do a lot of recording during sleep um, and particularly for the epilepsies relating to sleep. And so the equipment that is available or that is purchased will vary between sleep labs and clinical neurophysiology labs and the type of focus of what we're out to try and measure. Now it's not to say that sleep labs won't look at aspects of epilepsy or that um, you know, epilepsy type laboratories won't look at things relating to sleep. There is a certain amount of crossover 
but really when one's making one's purchasing decisions as to what type of equipment you're going to you know go for you've got to be thinking about you know what's 90 95 percent of your usage going to be um in terms of what you purchase so on this screen over here um, you can see a variety of different systems uh, which i have personally used um, over the years um, this is relevant to um, this particular uh, talk over here using the uh, somno screen um, so this is no doubt an updated version of the one that i had used uh, back in 2005 um, but these are very much dedicated to seep laboratories um, and and it really uh, straightforward for those type of settings um, then for more of the eg lab type of settings uh, that i would be accustomed to one has primarily eeg um, based equipment which has um, additional modalities for polysomnography um, as well with various sort of plug-in attachments um, and these will include your cad wells um, your day meds uh, natuses and uh, micromed systems uh, all of which I have used. I'm not plugging any of these or paid to do any of that, um, but you know th this is what I use. So uh, coming back to me, so I just really want to work from way from top down to bottom. Um, so um, we have various um, EEG leads which occur over the brain. Those are directly recording the brain waves. Um, different systems will allow for different amounts of leads, but generally there aren't as many leads as we would use in a clinical neurophysiology laboratory. Um, in addition to which, um, you also have some leads by the eyes, the electrooculogram, uh, which is important for identifying uh, REM sleep, and also under the chin, looking at the muscle tone over here, um, some EMG. Um, again, also helpful for scoring REM sleep. Um, what you can then see over here by my nose is a thermistor um, and that's actually measuring airflow across uh, my nose and my mouth uh, we actually didn't use that in the end for our study we actually used a pressure um, system um, instead um, there's also a snore microphone over there for those who snore and then you can see a, very, a series of belts so the one in the middle here is just really attaching the box to me uh, but the top one here is a thoracic belt so as we breathe in our thorax expands as the air moves in um, and our um, abdomen our stomach also uh, moves out usually as well and so that's the lower belt those who have got uh, sleep apnea what can happen is, is there's obstruction um, of the upper airway um, over there and so as the uh, diaphragm descends um, and the uh, glottis the opening of the uh, airway closes down um, then the stomach will come out still as the diaphragm is moving down it's pushing the stomach contents down but the thorax actually gets sort of sucked into itself and you can actually pick that up and that's an important uh, element of assessing uh, sleep disordered breathing um, down here by my fingers is the uh, oxygen uh, saturation uh, probe which also helps to uh, detect heart rates as well the pulse um, one also has the ability to integrate with uh, carbon dioxide measurements as well um, but um, you know, these are the various systems that can be uh, looked at in terms of respiration and polysomnography and ideal for looking at sleep disordered breathing, which is an incredibly important uh, aspect for a sleep laboratory to be monitoring. In terms of the cardiovascular side of things, we can look at the heart rate from the pulse oximeter. There may be options as well to plug in um, ECG leads as well. And also there are various methods for looking at blood pressure too. And they're also relevant to uh, both sleep disordered uh, breathing and also to those who may have um, nocturnal arrhythmias. In terms of movements, uh, we have leg muscle activity uh, detection via some EMG. So there were a couple of leads going down to my legs. Um, and then we have the box position as well. So uh, there's a, a, an accelerometer in there uh, too, which sort of looks at you know, what position one is sleeping in, on supine on your side, uh, for example. Um, the boxes may also have a light sensor too for when the lights are turned off. Um, and there are also options as well uh, these days to having actigraphy. Um, so we can actually record um, movements um, at the wrist um, and also, of course, uh, video as well. And these are all incredibly important for looking at periodic leg movements uh, during sleep and the parasomnias uh, when things go bump in the middle of the night. So that's polysomnography. Now, as I said, um, you know, epilepsy, nocturnal seizures, which are sort of more of my clinical uh, interest, um, 
the more EEG leads on the head, the better, the more definition that you, you can achieve. Uh, the video becomes incredibly important to see exactly what's going on. Um, and we have far more uh, options to sort of put uh, EMG uh, leads, so those are leads measuring muscle activity in relevant places to, to the very bit, various bits that move. And, and it's important as well, it's not just about um, what's being recorded, uh, the video is incredibly important in that and our knowledge of what we call semiology, the manifestations um, of an epilepsy or various types of nocturnal behaviours are, are incredibly important and so it's very much a clinical integration uh, between um, the behaviours that we can see and also the uh, various elements that we uh, can detect from what we are uh, recording physiologically. So thanks for watching and I look forward to welcoming you to the next video um, which will look at actigraphy and wearables. All the very best, see you next one.